Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online. This is the Doctor and we are, we are now at our last mission of the Season 9 revamped episodes under the Borg Advance. We come to Fluid Dynamics because a light in the dark is no longer there. There used to be two Undine specific missions. Um, a light in the dark, Fluid Dynamics. Maybe even another one, but I can't remember. There was one where you went, and maybe it was a light in the dark, where you went down to the um, one of the actual living spaces of the Undine inside fluidic space, and it was a, it was half space, half ground mission. That one was kind of fun. Anyway, here's what it says under fluid dynamics for the notes. We have overhauled not only this mission, but what it means to fly in fluidic space by adding a current mechanic to the map that alters your ship's flight path. The Hylasa have been removed, and you now have the opportunity to fight alongside Admiral Tuvok, commanding the USS Voyager, to rid fluidic space of a Borg invasion fleet. So this sounds way different than fluid dynamics used to be. It's pretty much a whole new mission at this point. Enter fluidic space and remove the Borg presence there. Will this be enough to stop the Undine infiltrations? The data you recovered from the Borg cube indicates that the Borg have established a foothold in Undine space. The Undine seem to make very little distinction between alien races. So it's quite possible that the Borg presence in their home is causing their aggressive behavior. We cannot afford a full-out war with the Undine. Their biotechnology surpasses even our most advanced technology. Therefore, we have assembled an expedition to remove the Borg presence from fluidic space. We found a system where the fabric of the two dimensions are breaking down. This is our best shot at creating a stable quantum singularity. The expedition will include the USS Voyager, commanded by Admiral Tuvok. He has analyzed the data you received from the Borg Cube and is confident he can create an artificial singularity. Your orders are to cross into fluidic space with Voyager, locate the Borg, and remove them if possible. Avoid conflict with the Undine. They will have the advantage, and you'll end up in a fight you can't win. I do wonder why we're using Voyager. Voyager, by this point in time, the 25th century, 2410 or whatever the time period is now, is um, Voyager would be an old ship. <laughs> they would have newer and better ships to use. So I wonder why we're still using Voyager. <laughs> that doesn't make much sense. Even though it was the most advanced ship of its time, by this time, by game time, there are better ships. Travel to the CUDA system and rendezvous with the expedition fleet and then cross into fluidic space. The CUDA system is in the Palea sector, which is located off the Gamma Orionis sector block. The new rewards you get are ad Adaptive Transphasic Torpedo Mark 12, Damage Times 3, and a Borg Modifier. I don't know what that is that's new it looks like it does kinetic damage with 40 percent bonus shield penetration 90 degree targeting arc kinetic damage dps additional kinetic damage versus borg so i guess that's a good borg torpedo to use people out there will know if it's good or not but it's a new reward for this mission and that's good i guess that will help you when you get to end game if you're a new player and then you have to go do all the borg stfs uh, this torpedo will probably be a very good torpedo to use as you try to get all your Omega Marks. You also get Undine Marks. 15 Undine Marks from running this mission. That's kind of cool. Also, you have an Anti-Proton Beam Array, or Dual Anti-Proton Beam Bank, or Anti-Proton Dual Cannons. So very good rewards from this mission. Very, very good. CUDA system, so that's under that's in the Pelia sector. So there's a lot less to do in Gamma Orionis. Used to be there used to be a mission in the Hotep system. Maybe Sibirin? No, that's one of the STFs. Oh, Alini? I think there was one in Alini. There used to be other missions and stuff here. Uh, Vorn was also an STF. So uh, those are no longer there. The Gamma Orionis seems a bit dull now. Which is a shame. They took away missions. They needed to add more, not make less. Kuda. But it sounds like this mission is entirely different from what it used to be. Stopping a Borg fleet in fluidic space. Looking forward to it. Be 
begin fluid dynamics. Welcome to the CUDA system. I am Admiral Tuvok of the USS Voyager. I will provide tactical assistance on this mission. It's a privilege, Admiral. I studied the exploits of Voyager at Starfleet Academy. Thank you. Your meteoric rise through the ranks is well known to me as well. Meteoric. Sensors indicate the division between normal and fluidic space is thinner here, making crossing much easier. The Undine have used this location in the past. We will use it now. The majority of the fleet will remain here to protect this area. Our team will enter fluidic space, locate, and then survey the board presence there. If possible, we will destroy it. When you are ready, Voyager will open the Singularity. All right, let's go. So where's Voyager? Venture, Voyager, way up there. Again, so many newer ships by this point in Star Trek Online. And uh, we are still using Voyager. It just doesn't make sense. I know it might have those nanite torpedoes. Put them on a newer ship. That's all you gotta do. Why is this ship still in commission? I thought it was in a museum anyway. I thought that's how Voyager ended. Didn't they put it in a museum or something? At some point. We have made a successful transition into fluidic space. Unlike our own, this dimension is filled with an organic fluid. The main indigenous life form is species 8472. Sensors are detecting a Borg signature nearby. Your vessel will take the lead in the investigation. We will follow. Acknowledge, we'll take point. Why are we taking point? Sir, we are being affected by a wave-like current in fluidic space, which is causing our ship to move involuntarily. I wish we had more time to study the phenomenon. Well, we don't, so that's just the way it is. Investigate the Borg signature. This definitely looks different than it did before. Okay. Where are we headed? Straight ahead. It's a Borg device. It's some kind of Borg device, sir. I recommend we approach and get a closer scan. Scans indicate this is an interplexing beacon. The Borg must not be able to transmit their subspace frequencies as easily through the organic fluid that comprises fluidic space. These relays are boosting the signal to allow communication with the collective in normal space. This means we should be able to follow these beacons to the Borg foothold. Okay. Next beacon. Is way that way. Let's see if we can cloak. Although, I would guess cloaking in fluidic space might not work as well because you could see our wake, basically. Moving through the fluid. Plus, when I scan them, it takes me out of cloak anyway. Data acquired, sir. There appears to be a total of five interplexing beacons in the sequence. The next one is just ahead. So I guess cloaking just doesn't help me at all, because every time I scan one of these, I'm going to decloak. Admiral, this beacon ap appears to be picking up a subspace transmission from within fluidic space with a Starfleet signature. Recommend we investigate it. It could be a ship in distress. Agreed. Set an intercept course. We've been examining the data on the interplexing beacons, and we believe we may have discovered a vulnerability in the Borg subspace carrier wave technology. If it's acceptable to you, I would like the Venture to remain here and run some tests while you investigate the signal. We may not get another opportunity. It's Rebecca Simmons. 
This is acceptable. We will investigate the signal while the venture remains here. Investigate signal to the right. What kind of ship is that? Or do we have uh, we have Romulans with us? I didn't know that. That's an interesting structure. This landmass is unique in fluidic space. It is not a planet by Starfleet definitions. If I had to categorize it, I would say it is similar to the coral reefs found in Earth's oceans. The ground itself is a framework for living creatures. Fascinating. We are detecting a number of ships in the area. Starfleet, Klingon Defense Force, Romulan Republic, even Ferengi and Cardassian. Most species from the Alpha and Beta Quadrants appear to be represented. Mm, I bet they're planning to infiltrate us. Curious, these ships have identical configurations to ships found in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, but they cannot have been constructed there. I'm detecting alloys that are not used in standard ship construction. Aye, sir. Running analysis now. The alloys correspond to technology found on Iconia and in recovered Iconian technology. But why would the Iconians make fake ships? What? Well, that's new. There's a twist. Talking about a twist in one of the previous missions. There's a twist. Iconians making fake Federation or Alpha Quadrant ships? Gateway opening. Ooh, there's a huge fleet coming through. What? Whoa. Iconian frogs. That does not make sense. And they're attacking the... the oh, I get it. I totally get it now. It makes sense to me. This mission wraps things up, in a sense. Sir, we're picking up an Iconian distress call from the USS Venture. Captain Simmons to Voyager. The Borg are here. We're taking heavy fire and need immediate assistance. So, in case I need to spell it out, the Iconians are building fake ships from the Alpha Quadrant and introducing them to the Undine. So that the Undine will think that um, we are attacking them to make them angry and want to attack and destroy us, thinking we're making war on them. The Iconians are pulling the Undine strings, basically, just like they always do. And they're using fake, fake ships to do it. Dr. Cooper was in the escape pod, Captain. He wants to speak to you from the transporter room. Uh, uh, I never should have come on this mission. I'm a scientist, not an explorer. Take me out of this awful place right now! Calm down for a second and talk to me. What the happened? Borg attacked and we had to abandon ship. We were floating here, waiting, and then... Undine! They came out of nowhere! Tore through us like tissue paper! We shouldn't have invaded their space! They're so strong! We're weak! Please, take me out of here! Uh, I don't know. It all happened so fast. She insisted on being the last one to leave the ship. I don't even know if she made it out alive. Now, can we leave? Mm. And that tells us how... Uh, what happened to Rebecca Simmons. Or the fact that she was here. That's cool. So this is kind of wrapping up some of the... Or connecting some of the storylines. This is way, way much better than it used to be. All these storylines are coming together, and now we're introduced to Cooper, who we'll find out more about in future missions. Beacon scan, sir. Coordinates of the final beacon have been downloaded. This beacon is handling a significant amount of traffic.
there's cubes. Look at that. Are they building cubes or what's going on here? This is weird. Sir, this is the final beacon. I have the coordinates of the Borg fleet. We're very close. Shields up, proceed with caution. Engage Borg fleet. Yeah, but the Borg fleet is like integrated into the Undine structures. This is weird. Whoa, it's one of the V'ger things. The Borg presence is much larger than we anticipated. Nevertheless, our orders are to remove as much of it as possible. Huh. Voyager will follow your lead. Uh, yeah, right. So two ships, or th a few ships, got one, two, three, four, five, so maybe seven ships total? Yeah, that's gonna work. Very well, too. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Defeat Borg ships. Great. So it's one of these, like, whole Borg area things. What do they call it? I don't even know what they call it. Central plexus. Is that a Borg Unimatrix? Unimatrix. It's enormous! I admit that it is an impressive structure. Rear shields failing. Four shields failing. Target shields have failed. battle. Destroy it before we can retreat. The diamond, the diamond, the Borg diamond. Inventory full. Where's the diamond at? Aha! Warning, ship is under attack. us somehow. Four shields failing.
definitely a boss fight. They really ramped up, ramped up this mission. Freaking dreadnought with all updated gear and everything. And that's still giving me this much trouble. Wow, this is going to be a tough mission for uh, new players uh, or new characters that don't have all the in game gear. This is going to be a tough, tough mission. Especially this part right here. taking everything I got to, uh, to to take care of this and not die. Opening singularity now. I recommend an immediate withdrawal. That was rough. That was real rough. Boy, that was fun though. Where's the singularity? Oh, y'all left me alone. I'm all by myself. Voyager, ooh, you're almost gone. 3%. Wow. Is that the rift? I guess so. Whew, that was rough. That was a heck of a battle. Okay. Well, that happened. The, uh, Vo uh, the Vorlon Planet Killers. The uh, Undine Planet Killer can take out a V'ger type ship. That's good to know. <laughs> we need to report to Starfleet Command immediately. We thought that the Undine were responding to a Borg incursion into their space, but it now appears that the Iconians, or some entity posing as them, has created false Alpha and Beta Quadrant ships and sent them into fluidic space. Clearly, the Undine attacked us because they thought we attacked them first. Mm -hmm. There is some good news. The spread of the Borg nanovirus has halted, and thanks to the doctor's research, we should be able to prevent future planets from being assimilated in this manner. The Borg will adapt in time, but we have also stopped them from transmitting the technique for Undine assimilation to the Collective. It is possible they could learn how to do so again. We will need to remain vigilant. The Borg in fluidic space were forced to retreat, and logic suggests it will be quite some time before they trouble the Undine again. The end of the Borg attacks in their home might stop the Undine advance into our space. But if the Iconians continued to trick Species 8472 with false incursions, they could decide to invade ours in retaliation. Voyager will take Dr. Cooper and the other survivors back to Earth. I suggest that we all confer with our fleet commanders to determine the next course of action. Not a good idea, Tuvok. We have not seen the last of the Undine. Wow, that was a heck of a good mission right there. I liked that. But I wish they didn't destroy the other two missions to get there. They could have added this one. They could have had those two still be themselves and then just added this mission. This didn't have to be a, you know, they could have, they had a really good opportunity here to add missions instead of take away missions. But no, they have to take away missions. Let's turn this in first and then we'll talk about it. We may not have been able to remove the Borg presence in fluidic space, but it looks like the Undine will. Hopefully this will end their aggressiveness. However, I find your reports of false flagships in fluidic space troubling. If the Iconians are trying to trick the Undine into believing that we're invading their space, it could explain everything that's happened. Unfortunately, it only means that the Undine may be prompted 
into an invasion of their own. And if that happens, our entire dimension will be at risk. Well, I, it does happen. So we're going to get this transphasic torpedo. It sounds kind of cool. I'm interested to know what people think of this torpedo. Is it good? Bad? Do you use it? Undine marks and our choice of anti-proton weapons, which I don't really need. Accolade complete. Soother. You remove the Borg from fluidic space. So we get a new accolade from this mission called Soother. Oh yeah, I forgot to depart system. Okay, all done. Boy, my inventory's full. One thing I also didn't notice, just to backtrack a little bit from the last mission before this one, I got a fabrication kit module, Force Field Dome Mark 11. I also got an engineering kit Mark 11 Jin's shield turrets. So that came with that mission uh, when I got the Borg prosthetic. I got those two things also with it. So that was something that didn't show up or I just miss, just looked over. But um, uh, I am uh, an engineer on this character, so that will help me. Okay, so let's talk about this now with my very glowy ship. Used to, before season nine, there were two things here. One was Borg something or other, and the other was called Undine something or other. Um, they were two different storylines, or two different, mm, I guess, I don't know what you call these here. I call them storylines, like Klingon Wars storyline, Wastelands, Wastelands, a whole storyline. Um, there used to be, anyway, a Borg and an Undine one that were separate. There used to be a couple of... Um, uh, Undine missions, uh, or two or three, and there used to be more, more Borg missions. They have compressed them, reduced them, deleted some, merged some. They have taken away a couple of good ones, in my opinion. Two of the good ones are State of Q under the Borg Advance. I wish they had not taken State of Q out. I like that. Why? What was the reason? Why did you need to take that out? It still made sense with the storyline. The Iconians are messing with us in the past and everything. It makes sense. Plus, we get to meet Q again. He plays with us a little. It's just a, a diversionary mission. Um, but it was still related to the storyline. So why remove it? It still made sense. So there's no reason to remove State of Q. Second of all, they removed the uh, one of the Undine missions where you get to um, basically beam down to the Undine mass. And then at the end, you find one of the Iconian gates. And, a fat, and that's where you learn that the Iconians are messing with the Undine. Um, that could still have worked. That mission was still valid. I don't see a, a reason to remove that mission. In fact, they could have left all of the Undine missions the same and just inserted a new Undine mission being this new fluid dynamics, but they could have named it something else. And that could have been the last mission of the, uh, of the game, you know, before in-game. So I don't see why they remove the other Undine missions. What it seems like to me that they keep doing is, I've said this before, they keep compressing the game and making it shorter and faster. And I don't see a reason for that. It doesn't need to be. Some of the things needed to be streamlined, yes. Some of the dialogue needed to be streamlined and make more sense, yes. Bugs and things needed to be fixed, most definitely. Art and assets and environment need to be updated, most definitely. Removing story content does not need to happen. What needs to happen is adding more stuff. See, they Cryptic could have spun this a whole different way for, for Season 9 and said, look, we haven't removed any missions, but we've added more missions. Um, here's, here's a whole new, brand new mission with Season 9 that's now part of uh, the, uh, well, the last mission of the game, and which we just played, Fluid Dynamics. They could have named it something else. They could have introduced it that way and said, we're bringing you more content, not taking away content or merging content or compressing content, but bringing you more content. That's what players want. Players want more content, not less. Take what's in the game, sure, update it, most definitely. However, don't remove it because sometimes it's not necessary. War is good for business. It, it wasn't necessary to remove it. Um, State of Q wasn't necessary to remove it. Um, 
the other ones that they removed. Uh, just they weren't they aren't necessary to remove. Yet they did. I can't do anything about it, neither can you. It is the way it is, but it has now shortened. The boring advance is only four missions. Yeah, they're great and they're fun, but it's only four missions compared to some of these other storylines that have, like, more than ten missions. So I don't see the need for making it shorter and faster. That's not necessary. It's about the journey of the game. It's about leveling your character, following a storyline arc, having a good gameplay experience from start to finish. That makes sense, yes. It needs to be cohesive. But you don't need to make the gameplay shorter and they keep doing that because by the time you get to end game there's nothing else left to do but grind reputation so why make that experience why get to that experience quicker doesn't make any sense to me you know expand this excuse me it's the main storyline of the game and making that better anyway that's my beef they've done it in the past they like i said they started when they took out the patrols as actual missions. The patrols are still in the game, but you have to fly to the planet in question manually and just do each patrol separately manually, and it's not part of the storyline. It's not part of missioning. It's not necessary to get to level 50, and uh, there are no rewards for doing it anymore. There used to be uh, whole reward packs. You used to do like three patrols and then get a reward pack. That no longer exists. It's no longer part of the actual gameplay. Removing that made the gameplay shorter and compressed the gameplay again. And they keep doing that. I just don't get it. I really, really don't. Mind makes common sense. Just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. That's my beef. Other than that, I do like a lot of the updates they've made to these missions. The art, the environments, um, the dialogue is tighter. It, it is more cohesive from mission to mission now, but they still could have done that without deleting missions. So anyway, that is it. That wraps up our Season 8 and Season 9 mission revamp. That's all that's new on the Federation side. So that totally wraps that up. There's nothing left uh, to look at there. We are now caught up with the uh, progression of the storyline. Um, of course, they have the whole Solon A, Dyson Sphere stuff now. We've done these missions separately, but they do have this new this, this storyline mission when you get to you know, play this game. You'll do Sphere of Influence now is the first one you start with. Circles Within Circles introduces you to the Dyson Sphere. Supply Woes is not really necessary, but kind of it's like an, a tutorial that introduces you to where stuff is in the Sphere. Uh, the Contested Zone, again, the Omega standoff, again, that's all about just tutorials to tell you how to find stuff in the Dyson Sphere. Tower control, same thing. A Step Between Stars, that's an actual mission you'll want to do. Um, that's good. And then um, the new featured episode, which I'm assuming will be integrated after A Step Between Stars. Right now it's surface tension. Uh, eventually that will be put probably after A Step Between Stars. So that'll become part of the Solonade Dyson Sphere mission line. And then um, this fluid destruction, as that's just kind of a tutorial to introduce you to the whole, um, all the Undine stuff you can do now in Season 9. So a lot of that's introductory stuff. They're not actual missions. So the actual missions are like Sphere of Influence and um, a Step Between Stars and then Surface Tension. Those three will be the important things. Once that gets integrated, that will make more sense uh, at end game for that. Anyway, that wraps it up, man. That's season nine. We'll see what happens with season 9.5 when it comes out, but I pretty much covered everything that's new with season nine that I can. If I find anything else that I want to cover or look at, I will. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, series of the updated missions. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think of the updates. Did they do a good job? Did they need to do some of the things they did? Do you dislike some of the decisions they made? Let us know what you think about uh, the Season 8 and Season 9 mission revamps on the Fed side. And then drop us a line and let us know what you think about uh, if they should do some more updating for the Klingon or Romulan side. They've done all this updating on the Fed side. Should they do some more updates for the Klingon missions or the Romulan missions? Because that's another part of the game that often gets overlooked, especially the Klingon side. We all know 
uh, the history there. So thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the next.